Bill in West Orange, New Jersey. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better, because I'm have you seeing Mo Better, look at Mo Better, and show everyone else how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses when I cut the Zeiss top of the line digital freeform lens that goes by the name the Individual 2 with the Photo Fusion Extra Gray lenses and the DuraVision Platinum and the High Index 167. Is a top of the line guy and he's getting the Ray-Ban 4340V color 5998 which is the brown striped now what they have done and of course the 50 eye size it only comes in a 50 your Italian hard shell leather case your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth your Ray-Ban plastic sleeve that comes on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping and I'm gonna put that on there when I ship to you and of course this is the new, let me take that back, a revised Wayfair. There's a new Wayfair, there's an original Wayfair, and then there's this Wayfair, handmade in Italy. It is the RB4340V. The V stands for visual. Without the V, it's the sunglass version, color 5998, and the 50 eye size 20 bridge and 150 temple length. So in 1952, they came out with the original Wayfair. It was this frame, but had more of the panoscopic tilt. It came in towards the cheek and away from the eyebrow, which, in my opinion, a little bit of a design flaw for sunglasses, that it tilts away from the eyes and letting sun come in through the top. So in 1992, they came out with the new Wayfair, which is more perpendicular without the tilt to it. Changed the shape a little bit, a little bit more rounded. And then a year, maybe two ago, they came out with this one, the 4340, which is the original Wayfair shape, size, color, seven barrel hinge versus the single barrel hinge of the new Wayfair. And, but they took the tilt out. This one sits more perpendicular to the face. It doesn't rest on the cheeks as Americans are, are getting fatter cheeks. I'm one of them, so that's why I can say it. But uh, it sits more parallel to the face and if you have the invisible bifocal it makes it easier to read out of because it's not tilted inward so much now this comes in about 12 or 13 colors it only comes in the one size but if there's a color you want i know i don't have them all listed on my website at the time of this uh, video but i'll work on that but this frame sells for 173 dollars i guess that's enough about that let's talk about me how about i begin cutting lenses for Bill's frame. So I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses, one of which says Ray-Ban. Of course, you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging, including the little plastic bag with the SKU number on there. Place the frame into the tracing element of my blocker. Program this shape into this number with this assigned, uh, but this shape will be saved into my database. Your secret agent 2777. Three sevens in a row. You're lucky sevens. You are lucky because you found me because <laughs> I'm making your glasses for you before I blow up with my own design of frames which by the way this will be one of the frames that I designed for my Christian eyewear collection um, I just don't know what Bible passage I will assign to it but all my frames have that and if all goes well I may become a hundred air <laughs> millionaires asking a lot let me start with hundred air and uh, see where that takes me all right, so put the frame into the tracing of my blocker, hit start. A little stylus is going to pop up, go around, trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before we're doing the same thing on the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy any genuine frame, Ray-Ban frame that I offer, and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for that purchase in full for the flex dollars. Now, I'm considered out of network when it comes to insurance, so you'll get your out of network reimbursement from your insurance company, but I've been told by some that uh, it's actually cheaper going out of network than it is going somewhere in network, which is a sad commentary for insurance in this country, but the people that take insurance if you have a $150 frame allowance, they're only going to get reimbursed about $80 or $90. So they have to raise their prices so high because they know they're not going to get reimbursed what the allowance that you get. All right, so let me move on to the next screen. Enter your pupillary distance. The total combined number is 70 divided by 2 is 35. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. 
keep tapping the plus button until we get to 35. I want to raise the optical center height, the second height to 24. Change the layout screen from single vision to progressive. Now the blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and ever so slightly inset. Now, due to the COVID, whoever is uh, in charge of printing the stickers and putting them on these packets um, has not been at work. So you're getting the plain white wrapper and inside is your Zeiss lenses. That's the left. That is the right. Save those because I always recycle. I'm going to take your lens that I've already got dotted up, place it onto the platform of the blocker. Hang on, got something on there that's throwing off one of my spots. Now, this is a blocker, as I like to call it Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it's cutting. So I need two double sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got them here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick this one onto the first block, place it on the platform, do the same thing for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back, that silver button is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time, it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. And I'm going to lay everything out. The, it has three dots on the top dot and two side dots that are parallel with each other. The top dot goes in the orange crosshairs. These go within the, a six drop. The Zeiss lenses are a six drop. Get everything laid out perfectly. Make sure the lens is large enough to fit, and it is. And hit that button, the arm's gonna come down, place the block onto the right lens. We're gonna do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right. Place it on the platform, pull the sticker away. Line up the magnet, same optical center height, same PD. What's all these? I guess this dust was on there from when I dotted them up. But it makes little tiny black dots, and it's throwing me off for the main component black dots I need to be seeing. All right, get that laid out. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down, place the block onto the left lens. Now, even though the markings weren't on that white piece of paper, they still give you this 8 by 11 sheet that has all the information you can possibly want. If your doctor asks, what are you wearing? Hand them this 8 by 11 piece of paper. They'll be shocked. This is the Zeiss Smart Life Individual. This is their top of the line freeform digital progressive lens. Let me go ahead and highlight that. And your right eye reads minus 550, minus 75 at 75. Your left eye is a minus six sphere. To add for the bifocal strength, your PD, the optical center height. Even, uh, in fact, it has some some default settings for the Zeiss that you don't get on the other lenses. Even got the base curve included here. And of course, being a freeform, digital freeform lens, it has compensated formulas as it goes from the reading down to the, the near position. And all Zeiss, or all progressive lenses have laser engravings in them. That's what the three dots were. And it tells you, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. No, okay, it tells you that's how I get everything lined up and oriented just right. Those two dots go over those two squares, which is the laser engraving on your lens. It has the engraving signature for the nasal area, which I'm not sure what the S stands for, but the IN is for the individual 267 is the refractive index 1.67. On the temporal corner of the lens, you have the strength of the progressive, which is a full two diopters and their own little internal coding 40B2, whatever that means. I don't know what everything is. Ask my wife, she'll tell you I don't know nothing. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually starting to believe her. So, okay. The um, Actually, her birthday's coming up. I better believe her. It's going to be an expensive birthday. I'm going to have to buy presents for her. So let me wake up the computer. Your job ID number 2777. Lucky you. Lucky me. And uh, these are not polycarbonate. These are high index lenses. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens, but I am going to place one on the rear concave surface of the lens. Now I'm going to press the sticker on there firmly, place the magnet into the chuck, or by now you know I like to call it the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough. But the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel that's going to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center is going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. 
So I'm place the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. Hit the green star button. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens will be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame on the first go around. And you can see as it's doing that. Ah, hang on, my wife is texting me. I just got home, went ahead, got all the groceries. I'm parked in your spot. I think it's going to be tricky getting the groceries in with Peppermint, our new cat. By the way, the cat's name is P-E-P-U-R-R-M-I-N-T, Peppermint, because she got a little motor on her. Woo! You can tell this is the 167, because right off the bat, it smells like sulfur. It stinks. I should scrape up uh, all the optical sawdust that comes underneath here, put it in a plastic bag and mail it to you so you can get a whiff of it. That was fast. See how fast high index cuts? And by the way, for those of you keeping score at home, did you see the water spraying onto the lens while it was cutting? Polycarbonate cuts dry, where plastic high index, plastic, and Trivex cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens while at the duration of the cutting cycle. Now, it's done with the cutting. If you notice, your edges are flat, just like a nickel. It would stand up on the counter if I were to take it out now. Now it's dropping down to the middle wheel to get the V-shaped bevel. Now the PhotoFusion Extra Gray that you got, the regular PhotoFusion lenses have 30 to 40% blue light. The Extra Gray have 50 to 70% blue light protection that you hear spoken about that's emitted from today's electronic devices such as cell phones, tablets, computer screens, which Bill tells me he's in front of all day long. And of course the sun. Now you got the DuraVision Platinum, which is three coatings and one, three treatments. First treatment is reduces glare and driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, and such. The second feature is that it reduces reflection. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in their glass in your glasses, so it makes for much better eye contact. Or if you take a selfie or if someone else takes a picture with the flash, you're less likely to see the phone or the flash in the lens. The third feature is it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating to protect your time and investment. Now the Zeiss DuraVision Platinum Anti-Glare is what Crizal was trying to copy with Sapphire. Now the Zeiss Anti-Glare adds $99.99. The Sapphire is $139.99. So it's $40 less than Crizal. Now Zeiss invented the photochromic lens. They invented Anti-Glare. They sold the technology to other labs when their patent ran out and other companies quickly branded it something else. The, the Essilor calls, trend, calls the photochromic technology they bought from Zeiss Transitions. They call their anti-glare Crizal. So, they're both top of the line. They're both German. Well, Zeiss is German engineering its finest, but essentially Transitions and Photofusion, Crizal and Duravision are like comparing Zeiss and, uh, listen, <sighs> one of them days. I got the, ki the kitten on my mind. It's like comparing uh, BMW and Mercedes. So let's see if it fits first time around. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. It ain't even close to fitting, so I'm going to take it down two tenths of a millimeter, 0 0.20. Hit the retouch button. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and it's just going to go to the bevel wheel and take two tenths of a millimeter off. To all my American friends who have no idea what a millimeter is, it is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take two tenths of that off going all the way around the circumference of the lens until the lens fits in there. Now, this is one of the few times I may use heat. I will do that on high index lenses. No need to do it for polycarbonate, would I, but I will for high index. Doesn't smell like rotten eggs is bad this time around because most of it has been cut off. Out comes the little bevel wheel. It's just a very small, fine grit version of the cutting wheel that's just smoothing out any rough edges that are left over from the cutting cycle. The reason why I do that on every, I don't do it on the front, only on the back of the lens because as I push the lens into the frame, as you saw, it didn't want to go, but I don't want any sharp edges to come into contact with your frame that could possibly mar or blemish the outside of the frame. 
that's why I do the safety bevel on every job. Now I will do the front bevel, but only on semi rimless frames. That's the ones that has a string at the bottom. And since some of that lens is exposed, I do that. Now if these were not transition lenses, the other reason I don't like to do it is because it makes a little white ring around the transitions. More so than if it didn't have it. So again, tuck it in the outside corner, push down. You don't want to go in there, do you? Now the original Wayfair, it is not uncommon to have to take it down three quarters of a millimeter, but let's see, let's do another two tenths. The right lens takes the longest once we get the right just right we'll flip it over and cut the left now it's a corny saying i live by but the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra at the beginning of the word but it's not like you live next door so i'm going to take my time and make sure this is perfect you only get one chance for a first impression he's already told me he's got more frames he wants me to do he's been wearing this frame since the earth cooled <laughs> since for a while. Bill's a really cool guy. He plays bass or guitar in bands. He's the original hipster. No other frame says original hipster in this country like this one. Celebrities, musicians, movie stars, presidents have worn this frame with the tilt. Bill's going to start a new trend for presidents, celebrities, and movie stars and musicians. He's going to perform at Battle of the Ray-Bans and wow everybody. I don't play music, but I, I play my pillow. And I don't play nearly as much as I would like. <laughs> In my old carefree days, I used to play my pillow for about eight hours a day. Now, it's not like that. I don't get enough rest. I tell you, I need about eight hours a day of sleep and then seven more at night and then I'm okay I can function as long as I get that 15 hours <laughs> come on I think that's funny all right no one else hello is this on hello <laughs> all right I won't quit my day job so I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner starting to go starting to I'm going to back it off about a tenth of a millimeter this time one tenth so we're at half a millimeter total hit retouch again and I'm just going to tell more bad jokes while this is cutting. No, you don't want me to? All right. So, Bill, you got any special plans for July 4th weekend? What's that? I can't hear you. The lens is cutting. You have to speak up. I'm actually going to try and get away up to the mountains with my lovely bride. It's always 10 to 15 degrees cooler up there with a light breeze, so much less humidity. And when you're in the Piedmont area of North Carolina, it gets hot. It's not just the heat, it's the stupidity. <laughs> There's a lot of drunk people out on the roads acting a fool, setting off fireworks, blowing their hands off. I'm just going to get up to the mountains, sit in a nice quiet cabin on the side of the mountain until the stupidity goes away. All right, all right, so let's see if it fits this time around. If not, if not, I'm gonna start to put a little bit of heat on there. All right, make sure there's no optical sawdust. Let's see if it wants to fit this time. No, okay, so here's one of the few times you'll see me use heat. Polycarbonate is unbreakable. However, high index, with the pros come the cons. Polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. High index is 20% thinner and lighter than polycarbonate. But it is not, I mean, it is thinner, but there's a chance it could flake. So, I'm going to keep taking it down. This one's going to be a while. We're now at 0.60 of a millimeter small. Hit retouch. You can always make something smaller, you can never make it larger. Unless you're talking about my waist, my belly. I can make that bigger. And you know what, it gets easier with every year of my life. 
But again, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to get ripped. I'm going to get better than ripped. I'm going to get ripped. Because <laughs> when I launch my new brands of eyewear, so my Christian eyewear is going to have a cross right here on the temple. And I'm using this frame. Don't tell anyone. It's the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer. I'm putting a silver. You can get black tortoise or purple, majestic purple, with a silver like this Ray-Ban or a gold cross. And there'll be a matching one down here. For future frames, I think I'm going to put a fish. The fish icon on the temples. But again, I'm not doing the single barrel hinge. I'm doing the seven barrel hinge of the original wafer i wanted it so you could drive over with your car i'm not shaming the new wafer i wear it and have been wearing it this frame is what made me started selling online i did lenses only because there are so many of these frames out there i did lenses only for the original wafer and then i said you know what people started asking me can you i just buy the frame from you and i was like no <laughs> i was like okay so I started putting the frame. I had one frame on the website, the Ray-Ban 2132. Then I had this frame. Then I started adding more and more. I put the huh in e-commerce. What, you really want to buy a frame from me? Okay. So let's see, let's put a little heat on here. And it has grown to what it is. But then one day I woke up and realized, actually it wasn't me, it was Glenn Fry of the Eagles. The person who wrote the song Hotel California, who is probably w wealthier than 99% of all the musicians out there from that one song. But he was a big fan of Bob Seger. He was from the Detroit area. Glenn Fry was still just a cover band. One more time, one more time, one tenth of a millimeter small. Quit tripping on me. But. Evidently, he was saying that uh, Bob Seger was a really nice guy. It was a documentary on them. CNN had it one time. And it was actually Father's Day weekend a year ago. We were at the beach, and it had very few stations, but CNN was one of them, other than watching cheese being made or cricket being played. I thought it was in England for a while. There weren't that many stations. But CNN does documentaries on the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, comedy, all that, and they did it on the Eagles. The musical group, not the Philadelphia Eagles football team. But Glenn Fry was saying how he met Bob Seeger, and Bob Seeger took him under his wing and said, Look, I'll teach you whatever you want to know about the industry. When I go in the studio, come with me. I'll teach you everything I can. But if you're ever going to make it big, you got to start writing your own songs. And Glenn, Glenn Fry, the look in that documentary, the look on his face when he said, Write my own songs. What if they're bad? Glenn Fry said, they will, I mean, excuse me, Bob Seeger said, they will be. Just keep writing. And that's the advice he gave to the guy who wrote the song Hotel California, amongst other seven platinum selling albums. One of the most successful groups of all time. So I realized I'm just a cover band. I'm putting lenses in other people's songs. I wanted to write my own songs. So I'm starting with the Christian eyewear. My wife who was listening to this project all along, said, well, if you can put a cross on the side, can you put a pink ribbon? Because her family's been devastated by breast cancer. So I Googled it to make sure the Susan G. Komen Foundation didn't have a trademark on it, which they don't. They have their own ribbon that has sneakers on it, and it's running. It's called Race for the Cure. But I also learned that all the other cancers have their own color ribbon. Lung cancer is white. Brain cancer is gray. Pediatric cancer is gold. Get in there, get in there. There you go, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. It only took minus 0.70. So let's see, that's at uh, six, yeah, we'll keep it the same. Press the sticker on there, hit the button, flip that over to L, place that in the Chuck, the Charles, the chuck -a -rama, or today I'm calling it the Bill. Hit the green start button, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is gonna be traced by two wide styluses. Making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the left side. And you can see as it's going around tracing the left side. And then the second time around measuring the thickness to know where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Look at that bill. 
your prescription is twice that of the average person. That's because you're twice as smart as the average person. No edge thickness whatsoever. That's what the high index lenses will do. Now above 4, 455, you can start to think about upgrading to the high index. Dry everything off, add to my sticker collection, and my center dot wore off. So, again, those two laser engravings, those two dots that I have on the lens. Put that over the Zeiss layout, over those two squares. And that tells me, get a center just right, that is your PD and optical center height, the position of where, segment height as it's called. Come down here to my lensometer, spin the axis wheel to 75. Man, it's been a long time since I've talked about prescriptions. Get everything lined up and actually the power, I'm going to have to move the lens, decenter it so I can read them in the prism. And we are getting, where's my flashlight? Here it is. We're getting 550, exactly halfway between 5 and 6. That's because, let's see, 20, you're on the 22nd rung of a ladder. You are very nearsighted. With your glasses off, you can read it like right here, see your fingerprint. But as it starts to get farther away, it gets blurry. So, your lens is minified. That's why there's a minus sign to make the image the correct size it should be. Now, once it is, you have three quarter doppers of astigmatism correction. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. Think of it as the fine tune knob. We're going to turn that fine tune knob to 75. The second power we're getting is minus six and a quarter. Because if you loan someone $5.50, then you owned them 75 cents, they would owe you $6.25 back, and that's where they are. Now you have no astigmatism. And if I was a proper optician, I would write sphere. To show that I intentionally made sure to specify there was no astigmatism correction in the left eye. Alright, let's see if it fits or do I have to keep taking it down? Let's just start charging by the hour on these. I'm going to go by the blue book. What the book says how long it should take to cut these lenses if I didn't have any power tools. Just using scissors. I charge for about three hours to do this. Three hours worth of labor. <laughs> Pills in the automotive repair industry. That's what he does. Let me do one more thing. Let me do one more thing. I'm going to wrap this around the lens. Just heat up the left frame. Bend that a little. Tuck this in. And there it goes. So, take the block off, use my hand approved drying method, add to my, oop, look, I'm getting a little, my hair piece is coming off, so I'm going to stick that back on there. I know, I'm a fool. So, if all goes well, we'll get minus six. I don't have to worry about the axis wheel because there is no astigmatism correction. We end up, look at that, minus six. And I spin it just to verify it is a sphere that the power still looks the same when I do that. Now, pupillary distance of 70, optical center height of 24. I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb, and we hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 70 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. The optical center height of 24, not to the bottom of the lens, but to the thickest part of the plastic of the frame. We're getting 24 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. 24 millimeters. Man, the kit is good. By the way, I should back up and say I went to college for this. I passed my the state board exam, which is one of the toughest exams in the country. I've been practicing opticianry for 21 years. I've personally cut over tens of thousands of pairs of glasses in my lifetime. I'm not just a machine operator. I understand prescriptions, how they work, and if something goes wrong, with someone's prescription how to fix it based on their last prescription this is what's known as final inspection i was making sure that the lenses were the correct power that they were supposed to be i also am going to do you know made sure the pupillary distance the optical center height were what they were supposed to be the last thing i'm going to do is get it in standard alignment <coughs> excuse me all this talking gets my throat dry sawdust kicking around 
rotten onion flavored sawdust by the way thank you very much good thing I love my job but I will wipe everything down with alcohol got two bottles of it here so that in the middle of this pandemic I don't spread anything and uh, but yeah as I clean your lens I mentioned that I'm gonna get these in standard alignment but Bill when you get these in the mail there's a small chance these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other and I'm no different and I'll show you in just a moment but because of that statistic 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them but I'm gonna get them in standard alignment first also known as a three-point stance all one two in the bottom of the frame being three I set them on the counter and press down there is no wobble now when I say wobble when I take my Ray-Bans off and press down they wobble on the counter but they sit level on me and again for those of you keeping score at home I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfarer size 52 in color 6053 which is the blue crystal because I almost have on a, a white shirt with a blue print and you know what that crystal kind of goes with uh, those crystal highlights I have above my uh, ears on my temples flip this over press down there is no wobble close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they do that neither temple is askew when I say askew like that check the tension on each hinge that's the same now I send out a selfie request in every package bill I would love to have two pictures one with you clear indoors one with you outside standing next to one of those beautiful cars or holding your bass guitar out in the out in the parking lot or on stage with them clear but uh, I'd love to have two pictures of you rocking these also send out cleaning instructions not only for your frame and lenses so they will last you for years but for the premium microfiber cloth that I provide your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth your Zeiss cleaning cloth and instructions on how to clean your Ray-Ban case so it too will last you for years no other seller does that on the internet I am told but I field test every cleaning cloth so if you get this in the mail and you see a wrinkle you know that it works it has been field tested so this is what your lenses look like clear I'm about to activate them which means I'm exposed them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light now as you can see it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for photochromic lenses to turn dark a little bit longer when you come back inside 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 now this is important everyone pay attention all photochromic transitions lenses will turn dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks are exposed to the sun after that they will work for years at maximum performance the only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of your car your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet light that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day and that's why they don't turn dark in a car now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle yes now the other thing is that all photochromic lenses are well actually I also want to say that these the extra active will get 50 to 70 percent dark behind a windshield they're also temperature sensitive meaning they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above but I like to remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside but again having said that these extra active lenses are designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside now again Bill these will get darker in the next couple weeks come on we talked about that don't you remember but if anyone has any questions you can go to the I'm out of, I'm out of place I'm out of place if uh, do me a favor like this video subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already click the bell icon so you can get future notifications of frames and lenses as they become available the if you have any questions as I was saying go to the contact me page of the website you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram as free prescription lenses on Twitter as free RX lenses you can leave a question or comment in the comment section below but Bill in West Orange New Jersey oh by the way this frame the Ray-Ban 4340 V sells for 173 the Zeiss individual 2 the the top of the line premium digital freeform lens from Zeiss is 299.99 the photo fusion extra gray is 129.99 for total and uh, the duravision platinum anti-glare is 99.99 for total 702.97 tax-free the reason why i point that out now is that 
a lot of people on the internet are having to charge tax. I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina considers eyeglasses a medical device and there's no tax collected on medical devices. That's how I'm able to remain tax free and of course free shipping anywhere in the US. But Bill, again, thank you so much for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 4340 color 5998. And now hopefully everyone else has gotten a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.